Now, have you got your Bible for the reading? Eighth chapter of Samuel. And I promised Jean to stay back there to record the rest of this. We were just beginning to, in our meeting. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us that we may be like the nation, all nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel heard all these words of the people and rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the man of Israel, Go ye ever man to his city. Now, if I should try to choose from this this morning what I would call a text for the next few minutes, I would like to choose the text of the rejected king. It was a time that is in all times that people has never wanted God to lead them. They want their own way of leadership. And this story this morning, and when you go to your home, it would be good for you to read it all the way through. It was during the time of the, the days of Samuel, the man of God, the prophet. And he had been a just man and a good man, honorable, reputable. True and honest with the people, never deceiving them and telling them nothing but straight, thus saith the Lord. But the people had come to a place where they wanted to change this program. They had looked upon the Philistines and the Amalekites. Amorites, Hatites, and the other nations of the world, and they had seen that they had kings that ruled them and governed them and guided them and fought their battles and so forth. And this seemed to be that Israel wanted to pattern themselves like these kings like these people. But it has never been in any age God's intention for His people to act like the people of the world, or to be governed or controlled like the people of the world. God's people is always has been uh, a peculiar people, a different people, a call out, a separated, an altogether different in their action, in their way, in their manner of living, than what the peoples of the world have. Their appetites for things. And all that their makeup is has been always contrary to the things that the people of the world desire. <clears throat> and the people of Israel came to Samuel and said, Now, you are getting old, and your sons do not walk in your way, because they wasn't true like Samuel. They were bribers and takers of money. And they said, Samuel, your boys is not like you, so we want you to go out and to find us a king and anoint him and make us a people like 
the rest of the peoples of the world. And Samuel tried to tell them that that would not work. He said, if you do that, the first thing you know, you'll find that he'll call all your sons from your home and make soldiers out of them to run before his chariot and bear armors and spears. Not only that, but he'll call your daughters to make bakers of bread and take them away from you to feed the army. And said, besides all that, he'll take a certain taxes off of you, of your grain and all your income. He'll tax all of that to make certain government uh, uh, debts and so forth that'll have to be paid. He said, I think you are altogether making a mistake. But when the people said, but we still want to be like the rest of the people, there's something about men and women that they long to be like one another. And there has only been one man ever lived on earth that was our example. That was the one that died for us all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was the perfect example of what we should be, always about the Father's business and doing that which is right. And no matter how much that Samuel tried to persuade the people continually, they went after him day and night. We want a king. We want a man. We want a man that we can say, this is our God. And that has never been the will of God. It never was the will of God, or never will be the will of God, for man to rule over one another. God rules over man. God is our ruler, our king. And it's a very, very much of a peril of today because that man seems to have that same idea. They don't seem to be able to grasp that God still rules man instead of man ruling man. So they chose themselves a man named Saul, which was the son of Kish. And he was a reputable man, an honorable man, but he suited the people just right because he was a great, tall, noble statue of a man. The Scripture said he was head and shoulders above any man in Israel. He was kingly looking and he was handsome in the face. He was a brilliant and an extraordinary man. Now, that's the kind of man that the people like to choose today. The people does not seem to be satisfied with the way that God placed his church to be governed and controlled by the Holy Spirit. They want somebody, some man, some denomination, some certain people to govern the church that they're not able to throw themselves completely into God's hand to be spiritual, to be led by the Holy Spirit. They want somebody to do their religion for them, somebody that will tell them just how to do it and all about it. So this man seemed to suit the place that 
exactly because he was a very intellectual man. And it's a whole lot like today. <clears throat> we like to choose such people, too, to control our churches, to control the church of God. Nothing that I have to say against it, but just merely to make a point that it is not, it was not, and it will never be the will of God for such to be. God is to rule his people to govern each individual. Amen. <laughs> then we find that this son of Kish, great man and and his statue and his, he seemed to suit the people that his robe up on him would look great and the crown on his head weighing above all the other people as he walked would be a, a real asset to the kingdom of Israel. For the other kings would, of the other nations would think, look what a man. How they could point their finger and say, Look ye here, what a great king we got. Look what a great man that's over us. And sad to say, but how true it is today with the church. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They love to say our pastor is not a narrow minded man. He is a great man. He is a graduator from Hartford or some great school of theology. He has four degrees out of so and such a place, and he's a very good mixer amongst the people. All that may be all right and have its place, but God way for his church is to be led by the Holy Ghost and by his Spirit. But they like to say that we have this great denomination that we belong to. We have started back in the early pioneer days when we were in the minority, just a very few people and small. And now we have grown into a place that we are among the largest denominations there is. We have the best schools and the best educated ministers. We have the best dressed crowds and the most intellectual people of the city attends our denomination. And we give to charity and we do good deeds and all such and nothing at all, God forbid, that I should speak one word against that. For that is all good. But still it isn't the will of God that man should rule over man. God said on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost to rule in man's heart and rule in his life. It was not meant for man to rule over man. But we love to say that. It's a very outstanding thing when we can say we belong to such a great organization. Are you a Christian? That's how I fell upon this text. When I was at the hospital, and I would ask one, Are you a Christian? I belong to such and such. Are you a Christian? I belong to such and such. And a little nurse came into the bedside where I was reading the Bible, and she was a, a new nurse on the floor, and she said, How do you do? She said, I believe that you're Reverend Branham here for a, a physical checkup. I said, I am. And she said, May I rub your back? Uh, uh, Make you feel a little better with the alcohol? And I said, you may do it. And while she was rubbing on my back, she said, uh, what denomination of church do you belong to? And I said, oh, I belong to the oldest denomination that there is. And she said, what denomination is that? 
I said, it's the one that was organized before the world was ever organized. Amen. Oh, she said, what? I don't believe I know just that. She said, I belong to a certain church. Is it that organization? I said, no, ma'am. <clears throat> that was only about 200 years ago, that organization. But this organization started when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. When they seen the coming of a Savior to redeem mankind. And she just stopped rubbing my back and I was stooped a little over this way so the lady could rub. And she, and she was from near Carden down here and we got to talking. And she said, Sir, I've always believed that if God ever was God, He's still God today, just like He was in the old days. She said, though my church flatly denies that, but I believe that it is the truth. Amen. And I said, you're not far from the kingdom of God, young woman. She said, if he ever was a healer, isn't he still a healer? I said, he most certainly is, my sister. But man wants to rule and rule over man, and man wants man to rule over him. He doesn't want to have God to rule. So this son of Kish, Saul by name, was just the answer to what they had wanted. The great stately man and the, oh, he could just lead them to their battles and so forth. Still, it wasn't God's way of doing things. God wanted his faithful old prophet to direct them and speak his words to them. Now, today in our great church age that we live in, we all think and believe this with all my heart, that we have exactly gone by subversity from what God ordained us to do. The last words of our Savior was in Mark 16, said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with the new tongue. And if they should take up serpents or drink deadly things, it would not harm them. And if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. There is not a man, Amen. there is no son of Kish, or no one else can produce that outside of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we have made school. We have made seminaries and made organizations to, to satisfy and to look like the rest of the world. Now, the Holy Spirit used to be the leader in this nation. This nation used to be governed when back in, when they wrote up the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. And there was an extra chair sitting there. There is not one speck of doubt in my mind but what the Son of God said at that table. Amen. When this nation was founded upon the principles of freedom of religion and freedom to all, and upon the basis of God's eternal word. But we have corrupted that. Politics, we have voted men in there under buying and selling and promises of falsehood until our nation and our politics and our democracy is so polluted until it's, it's interwoven with communism and all kinds of isms. 
And many times we call into the sessions for prayer when leagues of nations meet and there are to have discussions. And in one certain great time recently, there was not even one time call for prayer. How are we ever going to settle differences without prayer? How can we ever expect in all the world to ever do anything without the leadership of the Holy Spirit? But let me say this with love and respect to our nation and to its flag and to the republic for which it stands. We have rejected our leader, the Holy Spirit, and through corrupt politics have brought in man a perverse mind. And if you don't watch, they're going to make one of the most fatal mistakes they've ever made right now. It's because that the people are desiring man to rule. What we need in the capital of this United States as a president, what we need in Congress, what we need in our halls of justice, is men who have consecrated their life to God and are filled with the Holy Ghost and are led by His divine direction. But instead of that, we choose men of intellectual, men who have forms of godliness and deny the power of God. Men who are atheists and sometimes even worse than that, yes. we brought into our political rims of our nation. Not only that, but in our churches, yes. our churches have become corrupt upon the basis that we in choosing our shepherds to lead us. 